We've done an intersection, or at least a portion of an intersection, with the uh, the T-intersection here, and now we want to tackle a cul-de-sac. So how we would do that is very similar to um, the other scenario. We need to have the cul-de-sac line work. This is just standard line work, and I've drawn a, a, um, a 38 foot radius because I want a 40 foot radius face a curb and this is a 38 foot because I'm doing the lip of gutter and then a, a, a 32 foot radius out here because again the face of curb needs to be 30 feet in this area so it'll transition from a 30 foot radius face of curb to a 40 foot radius cul-de-sac and that's the way this is drawn and I've just run these ends long they don't have to be any particular point but they do have to be past this point so the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to create an alignment out of this. And we want the alignment, we want to, we want to be able to use this return subassembly. So the sidewalk's on the right and the roadway is on the left in this subassembly. So we need to keep that in mind as we go around here. And if the, if the sidewalk is on the right and the roadway is on the left, then we need to go around in a counterclockwise direction. So what I'm just going to do is just do a, a quick little arrow here um, just to kind of uh, remind my, myself which direction we're going and we will create a, an alignment from a polyline, that's fine. Select it closer to this end and when you press enter then you see the arrow and it uh, is in the correct direction of flow so we sit enter and we're not going to add curves, but we're going to erase the original. So now this is just a, a, an intersection or, or, a, or a, a, an alignment that is going around in the counterclockwise direction. And that's what we, we want. I can now get rid of this and we're ready to start working on this guy. The first thing we need to be able to add anything to this corridor is for this alignment, I need a profile, both profiles, an existing ground and a finished ground, profile and a profile view. So I will go to profiles, I'll create a profile from the surface and it's going to be a alignment six. Um, what, what we should do before we go any farther here, let's do a little bit of cleanup. We're going to make sure our alignment names are set correctly. We'll do, uh, We'll do cul-de-sac, whoops, okay, and we'll say okay. Now it's called cul-de-sac, and now when we go to the profiles and we create a profile from a surface, we can select the cul-de-sac alignment instead of just alignment six or whatever it was. We want to throw an existing ground in there. We'll draw in the profile using our standard Profile view, next, 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 just rifle through them all, it's not important. And we'll draw this profile somewhere over here. So this is the profile that we're looking at, and now we have to uh, do a, um, a finish ground profile around here. So what we'll do there is we'll go to profiles, we'll create from layout, we're going to select this guy, and we're going to call this um, FG1 cul-de-sac for this profile. And we're just going to use a simple profile. We're going to select somewhere here, does not matter where. Somewhere in the middle, it doesn't matter again where. And somewhere here. And we'll take more care in just a couple of minutes here. Oops, uh, any A. So the reason I went to these is these, the distance between here and here, that is the, that is the zone at which the, um, the 30, the 30 foot or 28 foot return is. So there's a return there and here's a return here. And how I know that is because of those, those little bit darker blue cyan lines. And then, of course, this from here to here is the big arc through the cul-de-sac. 
So I'm going to go right from the, the returns here all the way around the cul-de-sac and tie back in. So in order to do that pretty easily, I've already got my alignment pulled back to the returns. So we will just make sure that that's there, which it is. And I need to get the elevation at this point right here and the other point in in 3D. So I'll type in ID, END, and I'll select this point right here. And that is a 9543. And it's going to be the same on both sides because it is uh, a consistent um, roadway. So 9543 is where we want to be. So the other thing I want to do is I want to draw a line from, from the end of this line to for right now to the end of this line. Not important where as of as of yet. Then when we go into here, we're going to set those at 95.43. And this one, the two ends at 95.43. That's what that ID told us. But we are um, we're too steep. There's six percent on the roadway, so we don't need to be that steep. So what we need to do right now is find the center line of of this line once it is plunked into uh, to the two ends of this profile. And what we'll do there, we'll do this, and then we'll do a line from the midpoint of this guy just straight up does not really matter where. And then we're going to take this guy and we're going to put it on it, on that line somewhere. So now that is the center of that line. And in fact, we want to bring this down. We can certainly just, just bring this down. It's three, you know, so on and so forth. But if we want to do it perfectly, we can say a, uh, a, a 2% and a minus 2%. And what that gives us is a very nice, clean alignment that starts and stops. Oh, it changed that elevation a little bit there. So, we need to go back. And this needs to be 95.43. So there's a little bit more work to be done on this here. So we'll go 95. 43, and apparently I changed the wrong one out here. I want to go 2% there. And I want to go to minus 2% there. And now it makes it all of them 2%, 9543 and 9543 on the two ends of the road where we tie in. So now that's correct. Now it's time to start putting this together, this cul-de-sac together. And so we don't want to add another cul-de-sac, we want to edit the existing cul-de-sac that we already have. So when we select that, through the context-sensitive menu, we want to add a baseline. And so it knows that um, we want to use the alignment that is set current, the cul-de-sac. We say OK there. And uh, the profile we're going to use is the FG1 cul-de-sac and we're going to go back through in just a minute or so and fix this call it OG1 cul-de-sac just to keep straight here. So when we do that once the once the the region the baseline is created we can add regions and now it recognizes this profile so we'll select here and we'll, we want to start at the lowest elevation and wrap it completely around to the complete other side. And we want to use the return section. So when we do that, it's the correct direction. We need to edit the targets. We'll make that a little nicer here. We'll make those two feet around the curve. We don't need to worry about the line. And now it's starting to look a little bit better. And now each one of these lines really needs to target the road, um, the road B center line 
alignment and profile. So we'll go edit targets in this whole section here. And so on the, on the intersection lane, we will use road B for a width. And on the same subassembly, we'll use road B FG for the elevation. And then of course, we're gonna click here for the surfaces and daylight to all the surfaces on the outside. And when we do, we have this nice cul-de-sac that is, uh, it, it matches the existing road. It has all the features that uh, it should have. And if we want to take a look at this, this whole scenario here, we can say, uh, go to cul-de-sac properties, or uh, a corridor properties, and let's just add in a quick surface by selecting this guy here, adds in the surface, but then we need to add in the top links. So we'll do that. And it builds a quick little surface, uh, but we're also going to do a trim around the outer edges of that surface. So uh, we can go back to, we can just go right to here, and we'll go to Corridor Properties. And when we say Boundary, we can right-click on this and say the corridor extends as outer boundary for the corridor extents. And this will just clean it completely up perfectly. And now we have this surface that is a corridor surface. It's cleaned up pretty nicely. And what we can do is we can look at that in much higher detail for 5 and 0.5 FG. And you can see that, that the slope comes down off of this. The, the slope will come down and um, uh, uh, any, any water that makes it to the edge will come down the gutter pan, but then it'll sheet flow until it gets to kind of this area and then it'll head over towards the gutter pan and continue down to your awaiting drain inlets. And we can see from, from this other side here that um, it's a little bit difficult to see with the surfaces on right now. We're going to fix that real quick like. Uh, ones and fives OG. I'm gonna go to the model and I'm gonna turn off the triangles. Okay, and apply that. So some of those will go off with that. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the, uh, with the FG surface. So we want to go to surface property and go look at its style in model space. And again, turn off those triangles. Um, we have major and minor contours. And so now what we're looking at here is a cul-de-sac that uh, you can kind of see where the contours are going with it. Let's, um, we can adjust this a little bit down, kind of get a little bit better shot at it here. And you can see that part of it's in fill, uh, the other part is in cut. Right through here, this is in cut, this is in fill. and. Uh, that's, that's basically how you do a cul-de-sac. And if you have to do an offset cul-de-sac, it's basically the same way. It's just a little bit offset, and you'll have to make those arrangements as you need to to, to make your grades come out correctly.